Hello everybody, got a little delivery through from the malt miller today and I've got something new to look at, which is this Imperial Yeast, their global strain of lager yeast, which is supposedly the same um, stuff as W3470, um, which is also supposed to be the same as White Labs 830 um, and Y Yeast 2124, which is the Vihenstefan, Vihenstefan, something like that strain, uh, which is a very popular German lager yeast, used it a lot commercially as well as by us home brewers. Um, and yeah, I'll use this video basically to review this. So Imperial relatively new on the scene. Um, let's see how good their yeasts are. So Imperial yeast, first thing to notice about the um, packaging on these is 200 billion cells so the kind of main sales pitch for these guys is that they are packaging twice as much yeast as um, the other main kind of liquid yeast providers I think there's a couple of the other newer brands that are also doing bigger packs but your Y yeast um, and White Labs are uh, I believe both sort of 100 billion cells these are 200 billion and you should be able to pitch these straight into um, most brews and have a sufficient amount of yeast now this is a lager yeast so even with 200 billion cells it still really needs a starter if you're going to be pitching it into uh, a typical kind of 19 litre or more batch so this one is still going to go into a starter but I have used um, one of their other strains the independent strain in an ale and I pitched that straight in and it worked a treat fired up straight away I've had um, previous experiences with liquid yeasts where I've tried pitching direct um, with the smaller quantities and it hasn't worked out so well. So in my very limited experience so far, it's definitely a good thing. And even if you are making a starter with it, you're still getting twice as much yeast. Um, so even though the price looks quite high when you're looking at buying these, so these are nine pounds a packet, um, the White Labs and Y yeast stuff is about seven quid a go. So it's only two pounds more, you get twice as much yeast. Your starter doesn't need to be as big and it's likely to um, you know, generate yeast quicker anyway because you've got more going in to start with. So I think it's good. Um, they also have much shorter kind of um, dates on them. So they recommend that you're supposed to use it within three months. Um, you tend to find a lot of the other packages of liquid yeast are a bit older. So the ones that I've had have been really fresh. That's probably partly thanks to the malt miller. Uh, making sure that they're not keeping it for too long and um, turning it over fairly quickly but yeah they're trying to get the yeast out as fresh as possible in a good quantity and getting it into your beer so that's what it is um, I'm going to be using it in an American style um, not American style pilsner an American hopped pilsner uh, Centennial Chinook and Cascade roughly based on the um, PC pills by Founders, which is a absolutely brilliant beer. I really like that one. So I'm hoping for something similar to that. Not too crazy on the hopping during the boil, but a nice big dry hop addition of all three of those. And we'll be um, fermenting it with this stuff. So should get a nice clean result with that, hopefully, if it brews well. Um, and I am going to be today just pitching it into my starter, hopefully for brewing at the weekend. So got about a litre and a half starter there which should yield me about 370 billion cells if beer smith is to be believed um, at the end which should be plenty for a 19 litre batch of this beer so uh, yeah let's just get this starter ready to go got a little bit of star sand in the bottle so all of the brands recommend that you give it a bit of a sanitise on the outside of the packet before you chuck it in my starter wort has been boiled for the usual 10 minutes and we just want to get all of this into there and then stick it on the stir plate and that should, don't want to rip that off and throw the yeast everywhere so let's try and get that in there without chucking it all over the desk
Okay, so now I've got it into the starter. Let's give it a quick sniff. It smells yeasty. No great shock there. And then we have it in our starter. Uh, I'm going to whack that on the stir plate and pop it in the firm fridge to ferment away. Um, the date on this package was the 15th of April, manufacturing date, so it's now um, 31st of May, so it's only about, what's that, six weeks old. Um, so that's pretty fresh as far as liquid yeast goes. This should go off pretty rapidly. Um, should be at least sort of 75, 70% 70 um, viable at the moment, according to the Beersmith calculator. Again, assuming it's all been st stored well. Like I said, the last packet of this that I had off of the malt miller went off like a rocket, so I'm pretty confident. Anyway, I'll leave that to ferment away and update in a couple of days. days into fermentation and I've had it uh, at 17 and a half degrees for the past um, 24 48 hours is it two days I don't know one or two days but uh, anyway the temperature has been ramping up for a little while so it's had enough time for a diacetyl rest and looking at the hydrometer reading that I have just taken we are looking at about 1.008 or maybe even just under that so it's fermented out really well um, really good attenuation with that so Beersmith is measuring that as just under 84% um, attenuation which is a bit higher than I was expecting so it's gone from 1051 down to uh, 1008 uh, I think it was predicted to hit about 1010 or 1011 so it's gonna be a bit stronger uh, than I was expecting which is fine, but uh, yeah, a bit of a a bit of a pokey lager this one will be. So that's going to come out about 5.6, 5.7%. Um, Taste-wise, it's very clean. Um, there's a very slight uh, that sulfury kind of lager smell on the aroma, but otherwise, it's very clean. The hops um, there wasn't a huge amount of late hops in there on this one, but you've just got a little bit of the. Um, sort of citrusy floral notes coming off of the Cascade and Centennial which means that it's time to chuck in the dry hop so we've got the dry hop here which is a mixture of the three hops already used um, Centennial, Cascade and some more Chinook and I will just check the quantities of those so we've got 28 grams or one ounce of Chinook and half an ounce or 14 grams each of Cascade and Centennial so it's the big sea hops and just smells basically of um, yeah citrus grapefruit the standard kind of American sea hop aroma so these are going in and uh, I will then start cold crashing it as soon as the hops have gone in hopefully get those to drop out and be kegging it by the weekend so in another couple of days okay so dry hops going in Right, so we're just siphoning the beer across to the keg now. Um, it's been three weeks in the fermenter up to this point. 
as you can see on the top there, there's still a little bit of yeast floating around on the top. Um, I have cold crashed it right down to two degrees for the last couple of days, um, but it still has a bit of a haze to it, although um, some of that might just be chill haze from the cold crashing. So it's uh, yeah going into the keg now and will be force carbonated and hopefully ready to at least have a sample of within a week or so. Okay, so one week in the keg. It's, well, I don't know if you can see the bubbles on there, but it's definitely uh, streaming up the glass. Uh, very hot again today. Probably caught the sun a little bit, I think, looking at myself on the camera there. So it's a good time to have a cold lager. Um, it's not cleared down that much so far for a lager. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's pretty hazy. It looks like it's kind of getting there, but um, yeah, I mean, it's only one week in, so I wouldn't judge it too much. I've already pulled a couple of pints off of the keg um, before this, so I've given it a bit of time to, you know, draw the sort of dregs um, of the yeast and um, sediment out of the, out of the keg. Aroma wise, not massive amounts of aroma on there, but um, a nice kind of American sort of hot uh, citrusy kind of classic Cascade and Chinook thing going on. Taste wise, very clean. Certainly drinkable. Um, Probably more tasting like a pale ale at the moment than a than a lager, I would say, or a pilsner. Uh, but pretty good so far. So I'll come back to this in maybe another week or two and see how it's looking then. Because uh, obviously this is very early on. It's not really had a proper amount of time to condition. So I'll come back to it. But for now, looking good. Cheers. Hello again. So we've got another pint of the lager. Uh, another week on, or in fact, eight days since... The last taster I did and to be honest not much progress there in terms of it clearing down um, that's not just kind of frost on the glass it's a slight improvement on last time although this glass is actually narrower than the other ones so that probably makes it look a bit clearer anyway but it's very hazy um, for a lager style beer and yeah I mean after two weeks most stuff that I've put in the keg would be dropping pretty clear by now. Um, it is dry hopped, so some of that haziness is undoubtedly gonna be coming from the dry hopping. Uh, but having said that, I've, you know, brew ales and stuff with more dry hops than this have had in it that will drop clear. And most of the time I would put that down to the yeast, especially in this case where it's had an extended period at um, low temperature or lagering to help the stuff to drop out. Also, I've got another lager on um, the other tap, which I actually made after this one, so it's had a week less time. Um, it was dry hopped as well, though that one was dry hopped with leaf hops um, and slightly less, which uh, tends, to, well, I think leaves less of a haze than the pellet hops, but it's dropped crystal clear and uh, different yeast in that one, which I know tends to uh, drop bright fairly quickly. So at the moment, Clarity wise, not really uh, doing that well so far, which for a lager yeast, you know, can be a bit of an issue for some people, but obviously mitigating factors in terms of the dry hopping and so on. Um, flavor wise, it's kind of crispening up a little bit. Um, I said before in the last video, it kind of had more of a pale ale thing. I think there is more of a lagery character coming through probably just need to fine it with something gelatin or or something similar I'll uh, do one more come back to this one more time maybe in another week or two um, just to show you know what it's done after a kind of a full three to four weeks of lagering uh, and we'll see how it's gone there but at the moment I think just the main thing that I would pick out on it is the uh, clarity has been a little bit of an issue right time for the final verdict on this one so as you can see, it's four weeks later now after kegging, and yeah, it's not um, 
it's a little bit better but it's not dropped completely bright so flocculation um, is maybe a bit of an issue as I've said previously there was a bit of a dry hop in it but I think basically with this yeast I would say uh, yeah if you want it super clear especially if you're going to be putting any dry hops in then might need to look at fining um, I would use gelatin I'm not that fussed personally um, that's clear enough for me but if I wanted to get it to drop crystal clear I would probably chuck some gelatin into the keg at this point and uh, just try and clear it up that way fruit flies everywhere bloody hell um, so attenuation was really good dropped it down um, nearly 84% attenuation 1.008 uh, that's uh, positive uh, ended up coming out a bit stronger than I expected because of that but uh, very tasty it come out probably more of a um, sort of India hopped lager I guess rather than just a kind of slightly um, American hop flavored Pilsner but one good thing about that is I guess I can say that the uh, the yeast hasn't um, overwhelmed or taken away the hop aroma or flavor at all it has got lovely fresh um, citrus sort of sea hop uh, aroma and flavour to it and it has really now I think after that extra time lagering developed that kind of clean um, lagery crispness as well so in hindsight I think probably doing a sort of hybrid kind of lager style like this maybe wasn't the best option for reviewing a lager yeast with but still uh, I'm pretty pleased with the results um, decent yeast I would use it again uh, next time I'll probably try it in a more traditional kind of lager recipe to see how it works with that so yeah that's about it really um, decent imperial yeast my experience so far I've been very good with both the ones that I've used and uh, I'll probably be trying out a few more of them so cheers I'm the dude so that's what you call me, you know? Uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino. If